Good morning, we're learning Masech uh, Sirubin, chapter 9. The name of the chapter is Kol Gagot, page 92. So we end off with uh, Ravina tells Ravashi, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan really say this, that the halacha follows the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, who permits carrying between unmerged chatzurot, even when each chatzur has joined in its own eru. Vam Rabbi Yochanan, halacha kistam mishnah, Rabbi Yochanan said, halacha follows the anonymous mishnah, tenan, if there is a wall between two chatzeris. It's high, ten tvachim high and four tvachim wide. It has no opening that allow passage between the between the chatzeris. Two chatzeris may join in two separate eruvs, but may not join in one in a single common eruv. If there were, there were foods on top of the wall, oil in these residents of one chotzer go up, may ascend from here, from their chotzer to the top of the wall and eat the food there. And the other side can do the same thing, provided that they should not bring the foods down below. Since the top of the wall is full, <coughs> is tent for him in the top of the wall is fourth for him wide it qualifies as a separate area belonging to both chatzeris therefore carrying an object from the wall to one chatzer is tantamount to carrying from the other chatzer whose domain extends to the wall as well since the two chatzeris did not join a common able it is forbidden to carry an object from the top of the wall to a chotzer, just as it would be forbidden to carry from the other chotzer. So they have to sit on the top of the wall and eat. The we sit. They have to sit on top of the wall and eat. Yeah. Is there should be a field, the top of the wall that's considered a shulichid? So, part of it is belonging to one chotzer and part belonging to the other. Maybe two tefachim for each one. So the point is, they cannot bring it down. The ruling of this anonymous mishnah conflicts with Rabbi Shimon's ruling. That object which began the Shabbat in an outdoor enclosure, such as foods on the wall, may be carried throughout other outdoor enclosures, such as the Chatzerot, even in the absence of a common Eruv. Rabbi Yochanan's two ruling are then are in conflict. So what, what is the conflict? We just learned about the wall, which is we've learned it already previously, but bringing the case of the wall, that he's not allowed to bring it down, right? The ruling of the anonymous which conflicts with Shimon's ruling, object which began the Shabbos in an outdoor enclosure, such as the fruits on the wall, may be carried throughout the, over here we see they're not allowed to carry, according to Rabbi Shimon, he says you are allowed, as long as it's, the, the, it's the, the items began the Shabbat on the wall, then it's, it's no problem to carry them. So my lamata, what does the mean below? What does the Mishnah mean by its ruling that they may not bring any of the foods down below? Lamata labotim. It means that they may not bring foods down below to the houses in the chatzor. So meaning they're allowed to bring it to the chatzor, they cannot bring it to the house. So this way it could work with Rabbi Shimon. So they have a pit. Tani Rabbi Chia, Vachla, Zer, Oymed, Vukam, Vachav, Zom, Vukam, Vachav. So it says, residents of either chatzer may eat the fruits that are on top of the wall, provided that one does not stand in his place and eat, nor does that one stand in his place and eat. So rather, each must remain on top of the wall while eating the food, since it is forbidden to bring the food down to either chatzer below. So what do, you, what do you mean you can carry to the chatzer and not to the house? It says clearly that they have to stand in his place and eat. So it means that they have to eat on top of the wall. I'm a Rebbe, Rabbi, you should know that if Rabbi who codified the Mishnah did not teach this ex- explanatory writer as part of the Mishnah, Rabbi Chir, I mean, if Rabbi didn't teach it, where does Rabbi Chir come uh, gets it from? From where would Rabbi Chia, his disciple, the disciple of Rabbi, know it? If Rabbi purposely avoided incorporating the Baisa's phraseology in the Mishnah, how could Rabbi Chia assert that, that the Baisa is authoritative? Rather, we must assume that although Rabbi Chia recorded such a Baisa, it is not authoritative. 
So on night, meaning it has authority, it has validity, it has power. So on ninety one a, the Gemara cited Rav's ruling that even in the absence of common eruv, an object which began the Shabbos in an outdoor enclosure may be carried between all outdoors enclosures unless the individual chatzeros have their own eruv. The Gemara now cites the ruling of Rav's disciple and Rav's son in in a case in which one chatzer had an eruv but another did not. It must in the diagram, you can see it, two chatzeros and a ruin in between them. Achasir v'achaslevo. One did an eruv, made an eruv, and one did not join in an eruv. So they are prohibited from carrying from their homes into their chatzer. We grant dominion over the ruin to one to the one chatzer that did not join in an eruv. One may carry from this chatzer into the ruin. Aval she'er v'lo, but to the chatzer that did join in an in an eruv, we do not grant dominion over the ruin. One may not carry from that chatzer into the ruin. Why? Dilma osu lafuki money. She writes. Dilma osu lafuki money. For fear that if we permit carrying from the merged chatzer into the ruin, perhaps one will come to carry out uh, house utensils, utensils that began the Shabbos in the house into the ruin. Barav reports in the name of his father that we grant dominion over the ruin, even to the chatzer that joined in an Eruv, and Chia Barav explains this ruling of Rav to mean that residents of both Chatzorot are prohibited from carrying into the ruin. Now, Vim Tomash de Emutot, if you say that, if you will argue that uh, Rav meant instead that residents of both Chatzorot are permitted to carry their Chatzor utensils into the ruin, then why does Rav, above 91a, that we do not grant, said that we do not, or rule that we do not grant the right to carry in the unmerged chatzer to the resident of the merged chatzer. The Gemara, however, rejects of Erechia Barav's proof by distinguishing between the earlier case of the two chatzerot and the case of a chatzer in the ruin. Atom, wholesome there, perhaps, it is only there in the case of carrying between two chatzerot that Rav prohibits carrying from a merge chatzer to another area. Kevan de Minotre, Kevan de Minotre, Moni de Votim, Bechotzer, Osila Puki. Since house utensils are safe in the chatzer, people will come to carry them out into the chatzer. Because it's still safe, so they, they will feel comfortable carrying them into the chatzer. But here in the case of a ruin, Kevan de Minotre, Moni. The chotzer bechu b'leosil apuki. Since the utensils of the chotzer are not safe in the ruin, people will not come to carry many of them there because it's not safe in the ruin. Therefore, it is less likely that house utensils will be carried into the ruin. And Rav may not have considered it necessary to ban carrying into the ruin. Ikadam, there are some who relate different versions of Chiyav Rav statement. Chiyav Rav Omar. Barav reports in the name of his father that we grant dominion over the ruin, even to the chatzer that joined in an eruv. Shten mutoris and Chia Barav explains this ruling of Rav to mean that residents of both chatzeros are permitted to carry into the ruin. And if you will say that both of them are prohibited to carry into the ruin, if since he rules above that we do not grant the right to carry in the unmerged chatzer to the resident of the merged chatzer. I can respond that the cases are not comparable. Wholesome, perhaps it is only there in the case of carrying between two chatzeros that Rav prohibits carrying from a merged chatzer to another area. Kevon de Minotri, Moni de Vosim Bechotzer, since house utensils are safe in the chatzer. The rabbis did not permit carrying between the chatzorot for fear that people will come to carry out utensils which originated in the house in the other chatzor. There's more likelihood that they will carry 
utensils from a house to Chatzer because Chatzer is guarded. But utensils are in, in utensils are not safe in a ruin. Therefore, few utensils are brought there, and there is no need to ban carrying to a ruin to safeguard against house <coughs> utensils being carried into it, because people would most likely would not send would not carry from a uh, chater or from a house to a ruin. Gag, because it's not safe. Gag, if a large roof is adjacent to a small one, if you see in the diagram, large roof adjacent to a small one, and uh, there is no uh, partition along their uh, common, border, common border, no one able to join them. Carrying between the large roof and the house Below is permitted because the large roof is partitioned on four sides. But carrying between the small roof and the house below is prohibited because the small roof is completely open to the large one, which is a place which is a place forbidden to it. But I don't see where a partition is. think they have a, a wall or something there, right? Yeah, in the diagram, it doesn't look like there's any I mean, partition, I don't, but. I don't see that, that. Okay, it seems like there's a dotted line to between the large roof and the small roof. I mean, I, see the, uh, I think they're not in the same level. The large roof uh, is in 23. Lower. It says the large roof is like a chatzer that has an entrance to, to another uh, chatzer, but it is not entirely open to it. In such a case, the chatzer can remain separate from its neighbor and carrying is permitted between it, it and, and its house. Or its house. If the if the houses are owned by a single individual or by different owners, we have joined in. Any, let's see. In the picture, it seems like they are attached to each other, but in the language of uh, of the mission, of the mission no. it says adjacent. Adjacent is, is a, that is adjacent. Jason is budding? Uh, a budding, yeah. Yeah? I mean, it could be also... Because right? Samuch means near. 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 It's, uh, maybe. I don't know. Well, let's finish the mission. Did we finish it? I don't know. Oh, 22 it tells us why. It says, uh, see, the principle of oh, Gudasik allows us to extend upward the walls surrounding the exposed parameters of the roof but not the wall that divides the buildings below. As will be explained in the so the bo both roofs are legally partitioned on their three outer sides. The large roof is partitioned by side post on its fourth side. Ah, you see the dotted line is the partition. What the? You got a dotted line by you, David. Between the large roof and the small roof, there is a small dotted line. That's a partition. Do we have this? What is the partition over? So this is the large roof and this is the small roof. So by me, there's a little dotted line over here. Yeah. See, but the point is... We don't have that in here. So... So, since we say good asik, the outer wall, the outer uh, perimeter has walls, imaginary walls, and this one also has imaginary walls. But in between, in between, it says. Uh, the principle of good asik allows us to extend upward the wall surrounding the exposed per parameters of the roof, but not the wall that divides the building below. Mm -hmm. So both roofs are legally part side post on its fourth side. This is partitioned by side post on its fourth side. But the small roof is not. The small roof is not wider than 10 amis, therefore the gap between the large roof Side post is viewed as a mere entrance in its partition. 
Okay, so the partition creates as if it's an entrance in the in the large roof. So bottom line is you're allowed to you carry between the large roof and the house. I don't know how you access the house from the roof, but it says Agadol Muta Katana Su and the small one. Small roof and the house below is prohibited because the small roof is completely open to the large one, which is a place forbidden to it. The Mishnah has taught that the side post flanking the small roof constitute a one-way wall that partitions the large roof but not the small roof. The Mishnah now presents a similar case. If a large chatzel which has which was breached into a small one, okay, large chatzel has a breach to a small one. Twenty-six. No, the Mishnah chatzel gedolash if a large chatzel which was breached into a small one, gedolam uteret carrying between the large chatzel and its house is permitted. But carrying between the small chatzel and its house is prohibited because, yeah, the small chatzel and its houses is prohibited because the small chatzel, which is completely open to the large one, is like the entrance of the large chatzel and is not considered an independent area. You can see a diagram to that too, large chatzel and small chatzel, and there is a dotted line between the large and the small. Just on my... On my uh, the dots in the the, he tells us that the small chatzel is considered like an entrance to the big one. Lama lemit netaltas. The one says, okay, but what's the difference between the first case and the second case? The, ca- the case of the roof and the case of the chatzel. Seemingly, it's the same ruling. Right? Why did the Tana have to state in the Mishnah two cases to illustrate the same point? The case of the large and small roofs is legally identical to the case of the large and small chatzorot. Why, why teach both? The Rav, according to Rav, who does not apply good asik to a wall that is not visible from the roof, Kitani gag dume de chatzor. So the Tana proposally states both cases to teach that the case of roof is similar to the case of chatzor. So just as in the case of Chatzel, the wall is visible. So too, the, in the case of a roof, the wall is visible. The roof does not overhang the walls, which are therefore visible to someone looking down from the roof. Well, Shmuel, and according to Shmuel, who disagrees, with Rab and applies good asik even to a wall that is not visible from the roof. Gag Dumya de Chotza, the Tana proposal, states both cases to teach that the case of roof is similar to the case of Chatzel. Ma Chatzel de Kadosil Rabim, of Gag Nami de Kadosil Rabim. Just as a Chatzel is a place in which many people tread, so too the case of roof refers to roofs on which many people tread. The passage of many people from roof to roof prevents us from applying good asik to the wall that divides the houses below. The Mishnah refers to the small chatzel as the entrance of the large one. The Gemara elaborates on the nature of this designation and its ramifications. Yaseiv Rabba v'Rabbi Zeira v'Rabba v'Rachanan v'Yaseiv Abay Gabayu. Rabba, Rabbi Zeira, and Rabba, the son of Rabbi, of Rav Hanan, were sitting, and Abai sat with them, or near them. And they were sitting and saying, Shmami Nami Matnitin. We learn from the mish- from this Mishnah, which designates the small chatzel as the entrance of the large one, that the Yure Gedelo Bekitana, the domain of the residents of the large chatzel, extend into the small chatzel rendering it as part of the large chatzel. But the domain of the resident of the small chatzel does not extend into the large chatzel to render, to render it as part of the small one. Ketan, how so? What are the practical application of this principle? So 
So one extending into the other one, but the small one does not, does not extend into the large one. So but how the it, from the large one can go into the small one, the small one can't go into the large one. Correct. So it says, what are the practical applications of this principle? If these, if there are grapevines growing in the large chatzir, asul is right, tonight is forbidden to plant greens anywhere in the small chatzir. Why? Because of the prohibition of kila ker. Can't have a vine growing up and underneath you're not allowed to plant vegetables. It's kila. Yeah, even though they're not touching, they're but it's, it's, it's under it, you're not, meaning the, the, the grapevines, they crawl a lot, they grow like this, uh-huh. like a spider web, they grow, but you can, you can make a, a ceiling from it, you can just climb, and, so under it, you're not allowed to plant, also you're not allowed to plant in, in a close proximity, that it, you know that it will come. Right now it's not there, but you know that it's going okay. that direction. So if you have the grape vines in the large chatzir and it's and you're not allowed to plant vegetables in the small chatzir because the large chatzir ultimately will overcome, will come over the small chatzir. And if he did plant greens in the small chatzir, zayim aswim, the planting greens, whatever uh, greens he means by uh, spinach uh, or yeah, uh, lettuce. The, they're not gonna, I, mean, I don't see how they're going to mix with the grapes. But it's, not, it's not about uh, physical mixing. It's, it's a being, being there. Yeah, all right, so can't put, um, of course, you can put a wall between the two places and then you end up getting... Wall. Right, maybe if there's a wall, something else. But over here it says... Right, it's it's not, okay, I, I, I got it, all right, fine. I got it, I got it. So it says that if you did... <coughs> The plantings are prohibited. It says, if you want to see, it says in 35, the Torah forbids deriving benefit from the grapes or plantings of Kile Akerem. If one plants greens in the small chatzir, he has in fact planted them in the presence of vines. Since the influence of the large chatzir containing the vines extends to the small chatzir, the growth of these plantings and the proximity of the vines prohibit the plantings for all benefit. This characteristic is only with the vines. Only with in in, in Kilaim is for everything, but uh, but with with the vines, it's more. Uh, yeah, with potatoes. Series. potatoes grow out also. Like, yeah, but potatoes goes inside. You know, exactly, but the, 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 that's the root where you're eating. You're eating the root. But the, the, well, in the laws of Kilaim, you'll see that there's certain you have to keep certain distances. I know. I, know I, I understand. I'm just saying, uh, uh, potatoes. There's other other uh, things besides grapes that it goes to. But from the yeah, where a squash, the thing, squash is a good one. Squash and cucumbers, they go all over the place. Right. Watermelons. Uh, Watermelons go all over the place, true. So you, but this is the difference because it's climbing there. from the top. It's different. Oh, the grapes will go, oh, yeah. And right, you can right, climb below. Right. It's from the air. So I say you can create a roof. With uh-uh. with the, you have an arbor with the grapes. Some, some, depends what's the style of, of growing. Yes, the, the style of growing, uh, some of them, they create almost like a pole that looks yeah. like a Y. Right. Like the leather Y, and they stick it in the ground, and they trim, they, they prune the grapes in such a way that they would grow uh, only like uh, this. Uh, after the, after the they maintain it very uh, closely, but right. some, like my grandfather, had the gra- uh, grapevine, that you had the, the main vine, it would grow, and he would create, uh, he would put strings yeah. from both sides, and it would climb like this, so you would walk this almost like right. a, a sukkah on, uh, uh, is that on top. Arbor? So, yeah. you can, you can plant. so you can't plant anything underneath, or yeah. even in close proximity. Yeah. Italians are very good with this. Italian, French. Yeah, with the grapes and the wine, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. So but the grapevines in the large chatzir are permitted since they they are from stand uh, standpoint separated by a wall from the small chatzir and its greens and not subject to its influence. So the the grapevines in the large chatzir are influencing the greens, but the greens are not impacting the the vines. So if somebody planted greens in the small chatzel, the greens are disqualified, the greens are no good, but the 
but the vines are fine. Kfanim Viktana, what happened if it's the other way around? The grape vines were in the small chatzer and the greens were in the large chatzer. Kfanim Viktana, if grape vines are growing in the small chatzer, Mutal is is permitted to plant greens on, on, in the large chatzer, since from the standpoint of the large chatzer, where the planting is taking place, the vines are on the opposite side of a wall. So, 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 so it seems like, it seems like uh, <coughs> from the standpoint of the large chatzer, there is a wall separating from the small, the, the, the small chatzer has no wall, has no, has no uh, privacy, so to speak, from the large one. So that's one application of this concept of the large and small chatzer, is the case of the vines that it would disqualify the greens if the vines were in the large chatzer. Rabbi, one, one question: When Hashem creates something that we cannot do, it, it exists, it exists, but we cannot do. Is the same concept of Adam and Shon that he went to, he was in the Gan Eden. Don't touch this tree. It's the same thing. You are here, but don't touch this tree. It's similar. When you have something and you, you, you are How not allowed to... How can you have free choice if you don't have things you can't do? What? How are you going to have a concept of free choice if you don't have things you can't do? But could not exist. But, no, but... Why is it no, Because you have... Otherwise, we've got no free choice. If you don't have... Okay, you have a pig here and a cow here. You say, don't eat the pig, eat the cow. I mean, so you have to have the pig to choose to the okay. cow. So it's the same concept of Adam and Sean. You have this tree, but don't touch it. It's similar? Yeah, of course, because uh, if you uh, plant things you're not allowed to plant, and kilaim is coming out of it, some kind of a hybrid is coming out, who, who created it? Hashem created it, but He didn't want us to make this mixture. It's like a married woman that's having a child is having an illegi illegi illegitimate child, right? Uh, Mamza. So, who created that child? Hashem created the child, but you, so to speak, uh, forcing, you're forcing a situation that Hashem didn't want to happen. Hashem, he, Hashem gives us the free choice, like Shmo says, but He doesn't want it. So, okay. He, does, he, he doesn't but want he it, but he, he doesn't want to stop it because he says, if I stop it, then I don't give you a free choice. Uh -huh. oh, somebody got in? Well, wash your hands today. Okay. <laughs> but it's, just, it's similar to Adam and Shaw. You have this tree, yeah. you can, you're not allowed to touch yeah. it. You're right. If Hashem, if Hashem didn't want it to happen, He wouldn't make the tree. Yeah. Or He would say, you can eat it. You can yeah. eat from it. Listen, if they had waited a couple hours till Shab, uh, till uh, uh, three hours, yeah. three hours, they, everything would have been wonderful. Mm -hmm. The biggest question is, why did Adam not eat directly from Eitzah Right. If you have a tree of good and bad and tree of life, would you, which one would you go for? Obviously, the tree of life. Why would <laughs> so some commentators saying that uh, it says uh, a person does not sin unless he had the uh, uh, spirit of, of stupidity? Wachstut. So it's, that's a wachstut, <laughs> meaning you're not, you're not thinking. You have a tree of life. Eat from the tree of life. And Hashem didn't tell him not to eat from the tree of life. And once he ate from the tree of knowledge, he says, now I'm worried that he would eat from the right, tree of so life. That's why you gotta kick him out. And he would live forever. Hasidu tells us that that means that the mixture of good and bad will last forever. We don't, I don't want it to be forever. I want it to be a time that there would be a clear distinction between good and evil. Like we see now, we're living in a, in a, in a chaotic situation where everything is uh, topsy-turvy. The good seems bad and the bad seems good, right? Yeah. Anyhow, so, all right. we should, uh, but it's all boiled down to the free choice, free choice. If, uh, if Hashem didn't want Kilaim to happen, he would make it, that uh, they wouldn't grow. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's funny, like we eat things that were originally Kalai maybe. He could have made it that a married woman would never be able to have a child from outside of the marriage. Right. It says that Hashem is holding the three keys, right? The key of our children. So uh, he can easily stop it. I think it was I saw once that uh, one of the punishment uh, for Sodom, it says that why they were the, the Mabul, the, the generation of the Mabul or the Sodom, that they were destroyed because they forced Hashem to create Mamzerim. Meaning they, because of their illicit behavior, they promiscuous behavior, they created the situation that Hashem has to now bring Mamzer into the world. Eventually, they'll punish for it, but... Yeah, we got this whole LGBTQ thing happening, so maybe we're... Things are happening because of that. I don't know. I'm not Hashem. I don't even want to... Whatever, we got to make the best of it. Try to do good. So, a second application to the small Chatser of the small chatzel status as the entrance of the large one involves the laws of divorce. To effect divorce, the husband must deposit the bill of divorce, the get, in his wife's hand or in her property. Okay, so either he brings it to her house or he hands it to her, provided that she is then present in that property. Accordingly, the Gemara discusses the case of a husband who wishes to divorce his wife by placing the get in one of the two adjoining chatzorot owned by his wife while she is present in the other. So let's say the wife is in the large chatzor and he's in the small chatzor. Can he place it in one of those places? Let's see. Isha begdola get bektena. So the wife is present in the large chatzor. It's Shabbat, yeah. No. no, not necessarily. This is Let's about, see. This is not Let's see. So Isha is in the the woman that he wished to divorce is situated in a large chatzer, right? She's right now in the large chatzer, and he places the get in the small chatzer. Mid gareshet, she is divorced since the small chatzer is like an annex of the large chatzer. It's like an extension to the large one. The get is viewed as placed in the presence of the wife who stands in the large chatzer. So she's divorced. However, if the wife is in the small chatzer and her husband places the bill of divorce in the large chatzer, she is not divorced. Why? Since the domain of the wife's present location does not extend to the place where the get is placed. A third application involves the ability of shliach tzibu to conduct the prayers on behalf of the congregation. Man, this is If the congregation is gathered in the large chatzer and the shliach tzibu is standing alone in the adjoining small chatzer. It says, The members of the congregation fulfill their prayer obligation by listening to the prayers of the shliach tzibu since the small area is like an annex to the large one. So the shliach tzibu who stands there, it's as if he's in the congregation's presence because again, the large chatzel almost like swallows the small chatzel. But what if it's the other way around? Tzibu bektanal shliach tzibu bekdola. Ein yotzim edechotam. But if the congregation is in the small chatzel and the shliach tzibu, the chazan, is in the large chatzel, ein yotzim, they're not fulfilling their obligation. The fourth application involves establishing a quorum of ten for prayer and other procedures. Me, I asked you about something like this a couple of weeks ago. About the, my driveway, the minion in the driveway. Tisha v'gdolav echi v'ktana. If nine people are in the large chatzel and one guy 
is in the small chatzah. Mitzvahin, they combine <coughs> to form a minion, a quorum of ten. Since the individual in the small chatzah and that is in the domain of the majority who are in the large. But if the nine people are in the small chatzah and the one person is in the large, they do not combine to form a quorum since the majority of nine people do not have a tenth in their presence. Now another fifth application involves a prohibition against reciting Shema or other sacred words in the presence of dirt, excrement, tzavik dola, if there is excrement in the large chatzel. Asur likrod kiyat shema b'ktana, you're not allowed to say shema in the small chatzel. Tzavik b'ktana, if there is excrement in the small chatzel, mutar likrod kiyat shema b'ktana, it is permitted to recite the shema in the large chatzel. Why? Since the one reciting the shema in the large chatzel finds a wall intervening between himself and the excrement and the status of the small chatzel can no way adversely affect activities in the large one. So going back, the same concept again, again, the large chatzel affects the small one, the small one does not affect the large one. And so if you didn't, weren't able to smell or see it, then it would be, uh, you would be permitted to, uh, to say it. No, but if you are, if, if you are in the small chatzel it's, and the, there's excrement in the large one, it's like it's in your presence. Uh, but if you're in the large one and the excrement is, is in the small one, it's like not in your presence. Uh, That's what it's saying. So going back, so if, it, if it, I'm in, okay, so if the, the, there's the nine people in the large chatzel and I'm in the small chatzel, do I count for a minion? Mm -hmm. Yes, if it's the other way around, nine in the small and one in the big, they're not joining. Oh. The majority has to be in the nine, in the it's large exactly the same with my situation, because it's all one thing. So the last part was, if there is, if there is excrement in the small chatzel, you're allowed to say kachma in the large chatzel. No, if it's in the small chatzer, you can say in the large, but if it's in the large, you can't say in the small. Right. 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 So Abaye, who was present and overheard the entire discussion, of Rabba, of Izeira, Rabba, of Archana, questioned the ruling prohibiting the planting of greens anywhere in the small chatzer when the large chatzer has grape vines. Amalu Abaye, Abaye said to them, Ken matzinu mechitzali isu. If so, we have found a case in which partition causes prohibition. Partition causes prohibition. The fact that there is a wall creates an issue, creates prohibition. For had it been that there was no partition separating these two chatserot, assuming that there is no wall, if the large chatzel did not have side post on either side of the small one, one could leave a space of four amot, which is about 72, about four feet. One could leave no, uh, 72, uh, 12, 24, 48, 60, 72. And 72 inches is exactly uh, 6 feet. 6 feet. So it says, Malchik Dalad Amot Vazuah. One could leave a space of 4 Amot from the grapevines and then plants greens. But now the wall segment have been added. You rule that it is prohibited to plant greens anywhere in the small chatzel. So Rabbi Zeir responds to Abaye's challenge. In other words, what's the problem with putting, uh, staying away six feet or four or more and finish and plant? Why can't, you, why can't they plant? Greens in the small chatzel. 
In your Gemara, it says Dalet Amot. In my Gemara, it says Arba. I know it's the same, but. Yeah, no, it says Dalet. Yeah. Amr of Ezer al Abai. So Ezer said to Abai, We don't see any examples of the and do we not find other examples of partitions that causes a prohibition? Vatenan, we learned in our Mishnah, Chatzer Gedola Shani Fritzalek Tan, if a large Chatzer was breached into a small one, Gedola Muteret carrying between the large Chatzer and its houses is permitted, Uktana Sura Mepnei Shei Kepit Chashel Gedola, but carrying between the small Chatzer and its houses is prohibited because the small Chatzer is like the entrance of the large one. Ve'ilu Yishvad Gifufea, had one evened out its side post, you can see in the diagram, but had one evened out its side, its side post by drawing walls from the side post inner edges to the back of the large chatzer, the resident of the large chatzer would also be prohibited from carrying into the chatzer. So we see that the additional partition can cause a prohibition, unlike a bias assumption. There in the case that you have presented, it is merely a case of the removal of partitions. The additional partitions that have, that even out the side post, have effectively eliminated the partition that previously separated the large chatzer from the small. And it is the, this elimination of the partition that causes the prohibition. The Gemara again challenges Abai's assumption, and we do not find, do we not find other examples of partition that causes prohibition? Here's another example where the partition causes prohibition. It was said, if one placed a schach on top of the pavilion, of a pavilion that has post, a tefach wide at the corners, which serve as a side post to partition the pavilion's two, two open sides, kishera, it is a valid sukkah. But Rava observes that if he evened out its post by drawing walls across the post, in his edge, the sukkah would be invalid. So we have a case of additional partitions invalidating an area unlike a bias contention. Look, look at number one. It says that side post support, support cross beams that top the pavilion. These cross beams may play a role in the Gemara below. The sukkah is valid since it is enclosed by the minimum of two complete walls. And a third of at least a tefach. And in B, they don't have the walls in the back, so therefore it's possible. Because the sukkah is now enclosed by only two it's walls. No, the second one, not B. No, the first one. The first one, yes. The second one, no. But the first and the second, they look very similar. Except for the but back. The, they don't the, have the, you have the, they have the poles. Two, two, two poles. Yeah, the posts in the back. Yeah. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow.